Now in uh, 13 4, we already uh, looked at, uh, or should have looked at surface area. And that's gonna be the number of square units covering a uh, three dimensional figure. Here volume, in this case, that deals with, uh, it describes how much space a three dimensional figure will contain. Okay, and here standard units of volume are based on cubes and are gonna be in cubic units. Whereas area was in square units, volume is gonna be in cubic units. And a cubic unit is just the amount of space enclosed in a cube that's gonna be, that will have a measure of one unit on a, on a side, okay? So first we'll look at volumes of right rectangular prisms. And we can find the volume of a right rectangular prism by just uh, determining how many cubes are needed to fill it as a solid. So in this case here, uh, here we have a rectangular prism here, and it does have what they call a length and a width and a height. So the formula for finding the volume of any right rectangular prism would be just to multiply the length, the width, and the height. And you'll get your answer in cubic units, just like in this first example. Here we got a right rectangular prism where the length is 15 feet, the width is 10 feet, and the height is six feet. So here we just find the volume of that rectangular prism. Okay. So in this case, let's draw the figure of that right rectangular prism that's on paper. And I think it does have some dotted lines here to show that it is a right rectangular prism. Test. Okay, so here, 15 feet, 10 feet, and six feet. All we want there is just the volume, which is, of course, the length times the width times the height. So in this case here, I'm going to let this 15 feet be the length, the 10 feet be the width, and the 6 feet be your height. So in this case here, my length is 15 feet. times the width, which is 10 feet, times the height, which is six feet. It'd be 900, it's 90 times 10, that's 900. And of course, we have to include the units since our rectangular prism the length, width, and the height are in feet. The volume has to be in cubic feet. So the volume of that cylinder will be 900 cubic feet. Okay. I have questions on that first example. Okay. So now we'll move on. And we'll talk more about volume a little bit later. Right now, we'll look at metric measures of volume. The one that's most commonly used in the metric system for volume would be the cubic centimeter and also the cubic meter. Okay. So when we convert from one metric unit to up area, and that should be one metric unit, up, well, up area to another, that should be metric unit of volume. Yeah, one metric unit of volume. I have to change that to another. 
It involves moving the decimal point three times the number of places to the left or to the right, as you would with linear metric units, okay? Okay, so when you see cubic units, as you see here, it's gonna be three times the number of decimal places. So like in this case here, we got seven cubic meters and we wanna convert that to uh, cubic centimeters. So in this case here, here we got uh, seven uh, cubic meters. It's part A. And we wanna know how many cubic centimeters would that be? I'm gonna go ahead and write that table up that I have, that conversion table. down just a little bit, okay, there we go. Now, here we're going from cubic meters to centimeters. Now, if this was linear units, then that means you would move the decimal point two places to the right. But since it's cubic uh, units, we have to do three times the number of places that we would normally move. So it'll be two times Actually, in this case, two to, well, three times two, that would be six. So in the number seven, we need to move this decimal point six places to the right. So here the seven has a decimal point at the end. So we move this decimal point one, two, three, four, five, six. That means I need to put six, six zeros here. So that means seven cubic uh, meters would be seven million cubic centimeters. Okay. Are there any questions about part A? All right, now part B, here we got uh, 675,000 cubic meters. We want to know how many cubic uh, hectometers this would be. So we're going from cubic meters to hectometers. That would normally be two places to the left. But since it's cubic, we have to do three times that. So again, three times two, that would be six. So in 675,000, I need to move this decimal point six places to the left. So from here, I'm gonna move that decimal point, one, two, three, four, five, six. So now the decimal point is in front of the six. So 675,000 cubic meters would be 0 0.675 hectometers. Well, cubic hectometers. Questions on part B. And part C looks like this uh, 400, I mean, 4,000 cubic millimeters. It's equal to how many decimeters? That's DM cubic decimeters, I should say. Well, from cubic millimeters, well, from millimeters to decimeters, that's normally two places to the left. 
So for cubic, we have to do three times two, which is six again. So for 4,000, we move this decimal point six places to the left. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. Notice I have to put two zeros in front. So this will be 0 0.04 cubic decimeters. Okay. Any questions about converting uh, metric uh, measures of volume? Okay, because this time is three times the number of places you have to move either to the left or to the right when we're dealing with uh, cubic units. Okay. Now at the bottom of that page, you'll see a table. Here, cubic units may be used for either dry or liquid measures, although units such as liters and milliliters are usually used for liquid measures. Okay. By definition, a liter is the capacity of a cubic deci decimeter. Okay. A liter is the capacity of a cubic deciliter. In other words, one liter is gonna be, in this case, one cubic decimeter. And since one liter is gonna be one cubic decimeter and also one decimeter one cubic decimeter would be a thousand centimeters. And that's because if you're going from decimeters to centimeters, that's one place to the left, but you have to do that three times because it's in cubic units. So now we can say, we'll conclude that one liter is gonna be 1000 cubic uh, centimeters. And one cubic centimeter conversely would be 0 0.001 liter. That's one one thousandth of a liter. And also this, that one one thousandth of a liter is one milliliter. We can say a cubic centimeter is gonna be one milliliter, okay? So we'll be using these type of conversions here to uh, convert probably from cubic centimeters, you might have to convert it to milliliters or from liters. It all depends, okay? So here's the metric volumes here, four liters here. Okay, so here, this is just for, for liters here. One kiloliter is a thousand liters. A hectoliter is a hundred liters. A deca liter is 10 liters. And then for a deciliter, that's one tenth of a liter Centiliter is one one hundred of a liter, and milliliter is a thousand, one one thousand of a liter. Okay. So we're going to use that to uh, help us convert these. 27 liters is equal to how many milliliters? So here I'm gonna do this. Okay, so that would be the conversion table that we can use here. So in this case here, we're converting 27 liters to milliliters, this is part A. So here we're going from liters to milliliters, okay? To go from liters to milliliters, we have to go three places to the right. 
So in the number 27, we need to move this decimal point, which is on the end, three places to the right. So we're gonna go one, two, three places, which means I need to put three zeros here. So 27 liters converts to 27,000 milliliters. All right, questions on part A. All right, part B is uh, 362 milliliters. I'm gonna convert that to how many liters? All right, so this time we're going from milliliters to liters. This time we're going to the left three places. So that means in 362, I need to move that decimal point three places to the left. So I'm gonna go one, two, three places to the left. So the decimal point would be in front of the three. So that'd be 0 0.362 liters, so 362 milliliters. All right, questions on uh, part B. And part C is this, three milliliters is equal to how many cubic centimeters? Okay, now I did mention the fact that one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. So for every one milliliter, that's equivalent to one cubic centimeter. So three millimeters has to be equal to three cubic centimeters. Now, if you wanted to, you could do a uh, do something like this, convert three milliliters using what they call dimensional analysis, and then multiply that by, now we're converting two cubic centimeters, so the cubic centimeters goes in the numerator, we're converting from milliliters, that goes in the denominator. And of course, one cubic centimeter has to equal to one milliliter. And then your milliliters divide out three times one would be three cubic centimeters. And that is another way you can get that answer. Okay, any questions about converting uh, metric units of volume? Okay. Uh, There's also English units, English measures of volume. And those basic units there are just gonna be cubic inches or cubic feet or cubic yards. And you have to pretty much recall the fact that, uh, that uh, 12 inches make up a foot and also three feet make up a yard. And also 36 inches does make up a yard as well because for every 12 inches that equals one foot. Okay, But it's gonna be in cubic, so that means we have to raise each side of the equation to the third power. All right, so for volume, and for volume equivalents, one gallon is gonna be 231 cubic inches and one quart is equivalent to one fourth of a gallon. Okay. So let's look at these examples here that we have, example four. Say I want to convert, complete the following conversions here.
So in this case, let's say we got 20, well, 45 cubic yards in part A. We want to convert that to cubic feet. I'm going to write up to the side that one yard is three feet and also one foot is 12 inches. So here we're going to use dimensional analysis here. The 45 cubic yards I'm converting from cubic yards to cubic feet. Okay. Now the yards, if I'm converting from yards, I have to put the yards in the denominator. So feet, that means feet will have to be in the numerator. And this will have to be raised to the third power. The reason for that is because it's in cubic feet and cubic yards. I'm going from cubic yards to cubic feet. So I have to raise this to the third power. Let's see. There are three feet, so the three goes in the numerator, so one yard, the one goes in the denominator. Now, if I simplify this, this will be, bring up that 45 cubic yards, and I'll put this over one times. If I cube the three, that's three times three times three, that's 27 cubic feet over one cube will be one and I'd be in cubic yards. And as you can see, the cubic yards divide out. And that would mean if I do 45 times 27 on the calculator, I would get 1,215 cubic feet. So 45 cubic yards would be equivalent to 1,215 cubic feet. Okay. Any questions on part A? Part B, here we got uh, 4,320 cubic inches. And I want to convert that to cubic yards. Let me go ahead and add something else. Since one yard is equal to three feet, feet one yard is also equivalent to 36 inches. So I've got 4,320 cubic inches. I'm going from cubic inches, or let's say from inches to yards. And I know that one yard is equivalent to 36 inches. So that one would have to go in the numerator, the 36 would have to go in the denominator. One cube will be one cubic yard. 36 cubed would be 36 times 36 times 36. That's 46,656. And those cubic inches divide out. So 4320 divided by 46,656 
to the to two decimal places, that would be 0 0.09. And that would be in cubic yards. Okay. I was going to convert that to a uh, fraction, but uh, I don't know if you have a graphic calculator where you can uh, change that to a fraction because, but if you did, it would be five over 54 cubic yards. Questions on part B. Part C, 10 gallons is equal to how many? cubic feet. Okay, on your handout, it does say that one gallon is 231 cubic inches. So let's convert from gallons to inches or to cubic inches, then from cubic inches to cubic feet. Let's start there. So 10 gallons. Now we are told that uh, one gallon is 231 cubic inches. I'm gonna put the gallons on the bottom because that's what I'm converting from. Cubic inches would go in the numerator. And that 231 has to go here and the one has to go here. And what's going to happen here is that your gallons divide out and you'll have your answer in cubic inches, but you want that to be in cubic feet. Okay. I know that one foot is 12 inches or 12 inches make up a foot. Now I'm going to have to put the three out here. So I'm going from inches to feet. 12 inches has to go in the denominator. That 12 has to go in the denominator. The one has to go in the numerator. So now I got, let's see, 231 cubic inches. Number for this over one times one cubic foot divided by, let's see, 12 cubed is 1,728. Cubic inches. Twelve to the third power. I had to do because the inches has to be cubed. That means the twelve has to be cubed as well. Twelve to the third power would be twelve times twelve times twelve. That's 1,728. Any other questions? Speak now. Yes, 36 to the third. Yeah, because one yard is 36 inches, but I had to cube it because I had cubic inches. Any other questions? So what to the oh, 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 you're yeah, right. Let me do this 10 times 2, 20, 231. That'd be 2,310. Okay. All right, questions on this? Because I forgot to multiply 10 times at 231. And now I can divide out the uh, cubic inches. So if I do 2,310 divided by 1728, I'm gonna say this is approximately 1.34. Cubic 
Okay. Questions on this one, because I know that one was a that one was something else. I know you will not see this on the homework on the on uh, that last quiz as well. Okay. Let's see, D, E, and F, I skipped those. And uh, I might do a separate uh, video for those last three and post those on there for you to look at. Okay. All right, so now we'll look at volumes of prisms and cylinders. We kind of briefly touched on the volume of a prism, which is simply the length times the width times the height. And the volume of a cube, that's also length times width times height, but in a cube, the lengths of the sides are exactly the same. The length and the width and the height have the same uh, measurement. So the volume, if we let A be the edge of that cube, it would be A, A to the third. So the volume of a cube would be A to the third. And then for rectangular prism, it will be length times width times height for its volume. Now, for a cylinder, if you were to increase the number of sides of that uh, prism, then you'll get closer and closer to a cylinder which is this right here on the right side. The volume of that cylinder is gonna be pi times the radius squared times the height. The base in this case is a circle. And the area of the circle is gonna be pi times the radius squared. And then you multiply it by its height. Okay. And wherever they mention, you may have to use, uh, let's say 3.14 per pi, or some cases you may have to leave your answer in terms of pi, wherever possible. Like in this example right here. So here we're gonna find the volume of each figure and leave the answer in terms of pi wherever possible. So in this case here, we have a cube that is six centimeters in length. All right, so in this case here with a cube that has, let's say A and that's six centimeters, and it is a cube, by the way. So the volume of that would be A cubed. So A is six centimeters. And we're going to cube that. So six cubed is six times six times six. 216 and it will be in cubic centimeters, okay? So when you write down your answer, just don't write down just the number itself. You have to write down the appropriate unit and that's cubic centimeters in this case. So, so the volume of the cube would be uh, 216 cubic centimeters. All right, questions on that. And then next is a right, uh, rectangular prism. Right rectangular prism. And in this case, we do have a length. I'm gonna let the length be 10 centimeters and let the width be three centimeters. And then your height would be 15 centimeters. So there we're going to apply the formula for a right uh, 
rectangular prism. That's volume is equal to length times width times height. So it'll be 10 centimeters times three centimeters times 15 centimeters. And that's gonna be how much? Four hundred fifty, and this will be cubic centimeters. Okay. Questions on that problem? And for a right circular cone. Here we've got a radius of five centimeters and a height of 10 centimeters. Okay. So the formula for finding the volume of a right circular cone is just going to be pi r squared times the height. And we're going to leave this answer in terms of pi. Pi times the radius is five centimeters and the height is 10 centimeters. Oops, I've got something. That five centimeters needs to be squared because the radius is going to be squared times the height of 10 centimeters. So if I square the five, that's 25. 25 times 10 would be 250. And then I'm gonna bring up, yeah, 250 pi. And it's gonna be in cubic centimeters. Because the centimeters will be squared and then times another centimeter would be cubic centimeters. Okay. All right, questions on example five. Okay. All right, now let's look at uh, volumes of pyramids and cones. Starting with the pyramid. The relationship between a right pyramid and a right prism is this. The pyramid is actually one third the volume of a right prism. Okay, so the volume in this case would be one third the base times the height. The base will have to be something like, in this case, a, a rectangle or a square, or it could be a right triangle. Okay, so you have to use the formula for finding the area of a rectangle or the formula for finding the area of a right triangle, because that base could be a right triangle. So you have to know what those formulas are. And I think I placed, posted a supplemental video for, for that section, for one of the sections in this text that deals with uh, area. So do be familiar with those formulas. And in this case here, the right circular cone, that's one third, the right circular cylinder, one third the volume. So here you've got one third the base times the height, but since the base is a circle, we can say that the volume of that right circular cone will be one third pi r squared times the height. So now let's look at these two examples here. All right, let's say I want to find the volume of each figure, like in that right square pyramid. And this, of course, has a length of four and a width of four and a vertical height, as you can see here, of five.
And since it's a square, that would mean that the area of that square is the length of the side square. So therefore, and we're given the length of the side to be four centimeters. So that area would be four centimeters and we square it, that would be 16 square centimeters. By the way, let me change that A to a B since we're dealing with the base here. And the base is a square, so the area of that base would be side squared. And for finding the uh, volume of a pyramid, we do one third the base times the height. And that base had an area of 16 square centimeters. So this will be one third 16 centimeters squared times the height. They give us a height of five centimeters. Now, what I would do here is just do this over one and this over one. 16 times five times one would be 80 over three. And that would be in cubic centimeters. All right, questions on that uh, figure. And the other one is a right circular cone. Now here you're given a radius of six. Now this one's a little bit different here because what they're doing here is giving you, in this case, a slant height of 10. So this is six centimeters, 10 centimeters. We need to know what this height is. That's the H. Okay, so we need to know what H is. Does anybody remember the Pythagorean theorem? There we go. That's what we're going to need to use here to find out the length of H. And we're going to treat that 10 centimeters as a hypotenuse because this part right here, we have a right triangle. So in the right triangle, the uh, hypotenuse is along the side. And I'm going to let A be 6. That's going to be squared. Plus B, that's going to be H, and that's squared equals C, that's going to be 10 centimeters. So this is 10 squared. 6 squared is 36 plus H squared equals 10 squared, that's 100. And to get H squared by itself, I'll subtract 36 on both sides. So that means H squared, that's 64. And if I take the square root of 64, what would I get? Eight. So this eight right here has to be eight centimeters. That's your height. And your radius is six. So the volume of that uh, right circular cone would be pi times the radius squared times the height. I take that back one third. Can't leave off the one third for a volume of a cone. So here I got one third pi times the radius, which was six centimeters. I just say six, that's squared times the height, which is eight.
six squared will be 36 times eight. And I know something, I can divide three into 36. This three goes into this 36, 12 times. And then 12 times eight would be 96, bring down the pi, and this will be in cubic centimeters. All right, questions on finding the volume of a pyramid and a volume of a circular cylinder. Okay. All right, the volume of a sphere, which is like a, a basketball or softball or beach ball. The volume of that would be four thirds pi r, and that should be pi r cubed, not pi r squared. Again, I apologize for that. For those who are watching, is that's the form. That's the correct formula for the volume of a of a sphere: four thirds pi times the radius cubed. Okay. All right. So, in example seven. Let's say I want to find the volume of that sphere below and give the answer in terms of pi. So in this case here, we have a sphere with a radius of 10 centimeters. So here the radius is 10 centimeters and I want to find the volume of that sphere. And we're going to leave that answer in terms of pi as well. And the radius is 10, so this will be 10. That's going to be cubed. 10 cubed is 10 times 10 times 10. That would be 1,000. And I'm just going to do 4 times 1,000 over one, that will be 4,000 over three times pi, and this will be in cubic centimeters. So the volume of that sphere would be, with a radius of 10 would be 4,000 over three pi cubic centimeters. Okay. So pretty much you'll be asked to leave your answers in terms of pi, or you might be asked to use 3.14 as an approximate value for pi. All right, any questions about finding the volume of a sphere? There's one last thing I need to cover. Does everyone have this? All right, and that's going to be mass. Okay. All right, mass is nothing more than a quantity of matter. Okay, that's different from weight because weight is a force that is exerted by gravitational pull. Okay. You might have had a course in physical science or a course in chemistry that talked about uh, the difference between mass and weight. When you're dealing with mass, you're dealing with matter. Weight is 
just a force that's used by gravitational pull. That's usually going to be pounds, ounces. But the fundamental unit of mass in the metric system, we use grams. Okay, and this is the conversion table for this. Okay, a metric ton is labeled by a capital T. That's going to be equivalent to one million grams. And then kilograms, that's a thousand grams. Hectogram is a hundred grams. Decagram is ten grams. Decigram is one tenth of, of a gram. And then centigrams is one one hundred of a gram, and milligram is one one thousand of a gram. Okay. And I do have the metric conversion chart for grams on the next page. Okay. This one should be quite simple. You just basically moving uh, the decimal point either to the left or to the right, depending upon the unit of mass that you're dealing with. So like in example eight, we want to convert each of the following measurements. So in this case here, we got 38,000 grams to kilograms. Okay, so let me write that conversion. And we got 38,000 grams. We want to convert that to kilograms. So this is part A. Now notice we're going from grams to kilograms. So that means I need to move, I need to go one, two, three places to the left. So in the number 38,000, I need to move the decimal point on the end three places to the left. So this decimal point will move one, two, three places. So it'll be behind the eight. So 38,000 grams would be equivalent to 38 kilograms. Questions on part A. Part B is 0 0.026 kilograms to grams. Well, from kilograms to grams, this time we're going one, two, three places to the right. So in this decimal, so in this number, I'm gonna move this decimal point, one, two, three places to the right. So the decimal point will be behind the six. So 0 0.026 kilograms converts to 26, 26 grams. Okay, part C. 3,380 milligrams to grams. So from milligrams to grams, we have to go over to the left one, two, three places. So in 3,380, I need to move this decimal point one, two, three places to the left. So this would be 3.38 grams, or 3,380 milligrams. And then finally, uh, 0 0.06 metric tons, that's lowercase t, And that's how many kilograms. How much? No. Let me show. Let me show you this here. Here's 
here's metric tons right here, and that should be lowercase t. And we're going to uh, kilograms. If I multiply, if I divide one million by a thousand, what would that be equal to? Mm -mm. One million divided by a thousand. How much? 1,000. So this is what I'm going to have to do here. Take that 0 0.06 and multiply it. Multiply it by 1,000. OK. Just on metric, metric tons to kilograms, that's 1,000. That's, that's a factor of a thousand, so I need to multiply 0 0.06 times a thousand. That will mean I need to move the decimal point three places to the right. It'll be 60 kilograms. Okay. All right, any questions about uh, using the metric conversion for grams? Hmm? What was that again? Multiply by a thousand, yeah. Because from metric terms to kilograms, that's by a factor of a thousand. So we need to multiply 0 0.06 by a thousand. Any other questions? Okay. Let's uh, finish this up with relationships among metric units of volume, capacity, and mass. And that's illustrated in this case right here. If we have a cubic deci decim decimeter, one cubic decimeter of water, which is equivalent to one liter of water, that's also cool, equivalent to one kilogram. Okay. And also if we look at uh, one cubic uh, centimeter, okay, because in this case here, we have to divide by, in this case, 1,000 here for one milliliter. That's also equivalent to one gram because we have to divide by 1,000 because one kilogram is 1,000 grams, just like one liter is 1,000 milliliters. Okay. So if we look at this final homework example, here we have a fish tank with a right, which is a right rectangular prism, and it's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. If it is filled with water, what is the mass of the water? So in this case here, Ten centimeters by ten centimeters by ten centimeters. Let's find the volume in centimeters. So ten times ten times ten will be a thousand, and that's going to be in cubic centimeters. So that's going to be the volume of that tank. But here they want the mass of the water. Well, if I know this, that one cubic centimeter is equivalent to one milliliter, I can say this will be 1,000 milliliters. And that's for the fact that one cubic centimeter is one milliliter. Okay. And one milliliter 
is going to be equivalent to one gram. So this will be a thousand grams. Or if I want to, since a thousand grams is equal to one kilogram, I can say that the volume is one kilogram. Hope I didn't lose you on that one. Well, well I did talk about this, uh, about uh, the fact that one cubic centimeter is one milliliter. The reason why I went out to this because in the homework, if we had my math lab, if there was a choice of answers, and this was the only choice that you could use, that was it. Any other questions? Okay, so that's section 13.5 all together. And homework number six and quiz number six are due on uh, Wednesday. The review sheet for your third exam is on Blackboard for you to print off and bring the class with you on Wednesday because your test will be next Monday. Okay. Any questions?